right here on People Buzzer. Goodbye. Let's see. Sydney Browning. I don't think that citric acid, yeast, or sea salt would yep. pop. So I'm going to say A, carbon dioxide. Final answer. Got that one too for $16,000. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Thursday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Well, tonight our bonus is at an amazing $2,050,000. We don't know how much longer this can go on. Really, every day it gets bigger and bigger. It's soon to burst, I'm sure. This is no chump change, you know. You could almost afford a studio apartment here in New York City with that. And who knows what it will get you in Alpharetta, Georgia. How about two plantations and 500 acres? Something like that, right, Sydney? Maybe not quite. But... Anyway, Sydney Browning is back here. He's from Alpharetta, Georgia, and it's nice to have you back. Well, you got hot last night. You ran it up to what, 32,000? Uh, I think 16. 16, going for 32,000. Yeah, yeah. You know, I used to have a studio apartment in Manhattan. Really? Uh, it was 195 a month when I moved in. Yeah. And, uh,. What was that, of the 18th century? No, no, it was uh, 1977. No I was kidding. A student at NYU, and I took Paul by there last night. I used to attend bar at the bar across the street, and they were buying us drinks. And, and uh, we met a lady who still lives there, said new apartments go for $3,000. A month. A month, yeah. Well, that's what's happened to you. Well, what are you, Key? You're going to win $2,050,000, That's what right? I'm here for. It's yeah. my goal. And your buddy Paul, uh, these two guys were umpires in, uh, in what was the league, Sydney? Uh, we did several leagues, actually. We did summer leagues for the Big Ten. We did some semi-pro ball, mm -hmm. some colleges, uh, high school, American Legion. Um, you're better than average baseball. Everybody's at home cheering for you. Your wife, Alia. 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 And the two children, Layla and Benjamin. Yep. All right, good enough. They must be thrilled to death. You're back tonight. Uh, Layla's excited. Are you really in the hot seat, Dad? <laughs> she's four. Just had her fourth birthday, sure. so she's not sure what it means, but it's fun. Well, it means $2,050,000 if you go all the way, okay? And if you want to practice our game, go to abc.com right now and log on to our enhanced TV game. Cindy has won $16,000 at this point. He's just six questions away from the $1 million level. And once he reaches the $32,000 level, he's guaranteed to leave you with at least that much money. Cindy, you have two lifelines left. 50-50, and you can phone a friend. Remember, Cindy, if you go all the way tonight, you'll leave here with $2,050,000. Ready to play? Audience ready? Let's go. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Here we go. $32,000. What is the only U.S. state that touches two oceans? Alaska? Hawaii? Florida? California. California touches the Pacific. Hawaii's out in the middle of the Pacific. Florida touches the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico. So I would have to uh, deduce that Alaska touches both the Arctic and Pacific Oceans. So I'll go with A, Alaska. Final answer? Yes, sir. That's right. It's Alaska. He's won He's just five away from the big jackpot now, going to $64,000. Here it is. Which of these icons has appeared continuously for the longest period of time in a TV ad campaign? Energizer Bunny, Maytag Repairman, Mr. Whipple, Dave Thomas. Well, Wendy's came around during my lifetime. And so did the Energizer Bunny. I remember Mr. Whipple as a kid. 
but I believe it's B, Maytag Repairman. I believe it's uh, Gordon Jump plays the Maytag Repairman, and he was not the original. Terrific. All right, should you miss here, you'll lose 32000 well, Let's take a look at it now. He's just four away from the $2,050,000 level. Here it is for $125,000. In Daniel Keyes' 1966 novel, Flowers for Algernon. Who is Algernon? Scientist, a janitor, a mouse, a computer. the answer this would be easy they're always easy when you know the answer maybe there's somebody on your photo friend list who's a well-read person uh there is and i think this might be the time to uh to utilize that because uh, anything else would be a guess um, so I am going to phone a friend. Who do you want to call? I'm going to call Mary. What does Mary do? Uh, Mary's an attorney in Decatur, Georgia, and, uh, is in a book club with my wife. Oh, this is what we want. AT&T, bring us Mary, please. Hello? Hello, Mary. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin calling from ABC who wants to be a millionaire. Hello, Mr. How Philbin. you doing? Fine. Good. We've got Sydney here, and he's kind of hung up on a question worth $125,000. So we're calling you for a little help, okay? I will try. All right, he's going to read you a question and four possible answers, and one of them's the right answer. All right. All right, Sydney, you've got 30 seconds. Good luck. Starting right now. In Daniel Key's 1966 novel, Flowers for Algernon, who is Algernon? Scientist, janitor, mouse, computer. You have ten seconds. I think I can eliminate it's either it's either janitor or mouse. Okay, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> You know, it's either janitor or a mouse, she said. Now, if you were to use the 50-50, you maybe might eliminate one of them and might give you a, a stronger sense. For some reason, I thought it was mouse. She narrowed it down for me. I think I need to use the 50-50. Computer, take away two of those wrong ones, please. You know, we don't set things up like this. All of these choices are predetermined oh, I, in the I computer know, long know. before you come. $64,000 and say thank you very much. All right, you're going to walk with $64,000. Why don't we take a guess or why don't we see what it is? All right, the answer sure. was mouse. But Sydney, $64,000. Come on. Nice having you here. Good luck. Well, he was right. 
a fool and his money are soon parted. Sidney Browning heeded that old saying and goes home with 64000 It's not exactly $2,050,000, but I'll bet that goes a long way. All right, now let's meet 10 people who want their shot at the big prize, and they are Jim Britton, Butte, Montana. Steve Borenstein, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. John Wilkes, Independence, Missouri. Carl Holzheimer, Popple, Washington. Tony Klopecki, Boise, Idaho. John Moore, Omaha, Nebraska. Greg Gibbs, Durham, North Carolina. Mark Bueller, San Francisco, California. Jane Schimpf, South Lyon, Michigan. And John Flood, Williston Park, New York. All right, if you want the big bucks, then you have to get up here. So here's the first fastest figure question. Here it comes. For these TV series in the order they first debuted, starting with the earliest. Alf, Becker, Vaughn, Martin. Okay, time's up. Let's see that answer now in the correct order, starting with the earliest series, and it was Maud, and then Alf, and then Martin, and then Becker. All right, let's see who got it right, and then the fastest time the winner is, let's see, it's Carl Holzheimer. Oh, here, Carl, congratulations, way to go. When we get back, Carl's going to go for the two million fifty thousand. He's a teacher from uh, Seattle. Seattle area is really Bothell. It's a little suburb outside of uh, Just Seattle. north, yep. Welcome to the show, Carl. Thank you, Rita. How long have you been a teacher? Nine years. You enjoy it? I do. I love it. Yeah, I got the world's best job, maybe besides you. Well, your entire class is watching right now. Oh, they are right, so huh? excited. Are they? They are so excited. They did all kinds of stuff before I got, went uh, to prepare me. Like, and how do they prepare you? Well, they told me what I should do if I got here. Um, they told me that if I drank all of the water really fast, that it would be funny. They're eighth graders, you know. <laughs> okay. So I'm not taking that advice. No, I understand. And you're accompanied by uh, Sister Karen. How you yes. doing, Karen? Good. Actually, he's got two other sisters as well, huh? Yeah. And is it true that once a year, four of you go off on your own and relive your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> we leave all our spouses and uh, other riffraff behind, and just the four of us go away together. You must really enjoy each other's company. <laughs> We do. That's we do. nice. That's a nice uh, tradition. All right. Well, Carl, uh, you know about the rules around here. Yes, you know sir. about the lifelines. You know how much money you're playing for. You know how the kids are watching right now and cheering for you. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Carl Holzheimer. Okay. Boy, you can't slip up on these first five questions. Know. You know that, Carl. Okay, yeah. But here it is for $100. According to a common phrase, to get hitched means to do what? Get married? Find a job, buy a horse, lose your head. Well, if you get hitched, you get married. Final answer. Yes, sir, you get married. You got that right for $100. $200, Carl. Which of the following tools is most useful for clearing snow from a driveway? Would it be a rake, a shovel, a pitchfork, a toothpick? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say be a shovel would be most useful. Yes, Carl, a shovel for $200. $300. A race that finishes in a tie for first place is commonly called what? Dry heat? Dead giveaway? Dead heat? Presidency? This scared me. Um, I'm going to guess that it... I'm not going to guess. I'm going to say it's see the race ends in a dead heat. That's what it does. Ends in a dead heat. You got 300 <laughs> Carl, going for $500. People in what profession are nicknamed frogmen? Puppeteers, high jumpers, exterminators, underwater divers. Frogmen are D underwater divers. Final answer. Yes, sir. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Going for one thousand. In a 1975 pop hit, Barry Manilow claims, "I write the songs that make the whole world what laugh." Sing, dance, 
Listen. Now, Barry writes the songs that make the whole world sing. Final answer. Yes, exactly right. That's what he does. One thousand dollars. Up to two thousand dollars. Take a look. Which of these words is not coupled with the word poison to make the name of a dangerous plant? Ivy, oak, sumac, jasmine. Okay, I know there's poison ivy, and there's poison oak, and there's poison sumac, so I'm going to say the word not coupled with the word poison is D, jasmine. Final answer, Carl? Final answer. Got it right for two thousand. He's going for four thousand dollars. What company's longtime ad slogan is "When you care enough to send the very best"? Hallmark, Federal Express, LL Bean, Sears Roebuck. I'm old enough to remember this. Uh, when you care enough to send the very best, you're sending Hallmark A. Final answer. That's what you're sending, a hallmark. Four thousand. All of a sudden, it's eight thousand dollars on the line. Which of these major U.S. cities does not border the Atlantic Ocean? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Portland, Maine. Charlotte, North Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. I teach geography. Um, <laughs> Carl, I know you know this. I, I, you know I know it, and there's there's one in there that's just throwing me a little bit. Now but, let's just talk about it, okay, okay, before you use the lifeline. And if you have to use the lifeline, of course, you're welcome to it. But Fort Lauderdale, Florida? I can't, re I can't remember which side of Florida Fort, Fort Lauderdale is on, if it's on the Gulf side or if it's on the uh, um, Atlantic side. Well. You know what, Regis? I think I'm... Give me a 50-50 on this. Really? I guess I have to. Well, you, well, well, why, do we do it? why do we do it? I hate to see anybody use their lifeline. Come on, let's do it. Computer, okay. take away two of those wrong answers. <laughs> okay. They're not ordered the Atlantic Ocean. Portland, Maine, One of these, Charlotte. Right, one of these is inland. Regis, I'm going to go with C, Charlotte, North Carolina. Final answer? Yes. Yes, it's Charlotte, North Carolina. Whoa. When we come back, the teacher goes for 16,000. We did. Storm ready Wi Fi from Xfinity and see migration in theaters now. Rated PG. Oh, hold Tyler. This is the eighth grade out there in Battle, Washington. So you play me in the classroom because you use this format with your <laughs> students. I do. If we have a review for a test or something, I teach at Odell Middle School. I play Regis. They write the questions, uh, you know, starting with the easiest questions and going up. And I play Regis. We play in teams. And if I forget to say, is that your final answer, they go berserk and they make me throw the question out. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Making Regis adhere to the rules. Huh? Uh -huh. All right, well, here's where you stand. You've got two lifelines left. You've got $8,000. We're going for 16, Carl. Seven away from the big payoff. Let's play. Here we go. For $16,000, the 1999 movie, The Green Mile, what does the title refer to? Escape Tunnel? Floor of Death Row, section of a highway, spiritual journey. I saw this movie. The answer is B, Floor of Death Row. Final answer. Got it right for 16,000 dialects, the green mile. Come on, Carl, one more for the 32, okay? Yep. Here it is. In World War II, what was the equivalent of the WAX, or Women's Army Corps, in the U.S. Navy? Was it the waves? The CBs, the wasps, the wasps. The 
just seems too easy to me, so I'm trying to make sure that I know it. It, it, it was the wax and the waves. A. Final answer. Yes, it was the waves. $32,000. You can't believe your eyes, you know. I know. All right, five away now, Carl. Here it is for sixty-four thousand dollars. All right. Before becoming an actor, Sean Connery competed professionally in what sport? Boxing, soccer, bodybuilding, rugby. <sighs> Boy, we just one just jumped out at me, and I know that I've read this, but it's probably been years and years since I read this. I was a huge James Bond fan the movies growing up. Uh-huh. So I know I read about Sean Connery. See, every time we get up above that $32,000 level, a little bit of self-doubt I know. creeps in. I know. But you know what? I Gosh, I sure seem to be sure about this. Just looking over the answers again. I'm trying to think if anybody on my phone a friend would know this and I honestly can't think of anyone that would that knows any more about early Sean Connery than I do you know what Regis I'm going to trust myself on this one and I'm going to go with a boxing and that's going to be my final answer you know he was a bodybuilder that oh. he didn't know Mr. Olivia years ago cool. was bodybuilding 32 32 not bad, not bad. See what happens when I let you trust yourself? I know. I know. Good luck, Carl. Thanks. Ah, oh, too bad, huh? I said Mr. Olympia. I meant to say Mr. Universe. Sean Connery came in third in that contest in 1953. But, hey, Carl goes home with $32,000, and I'll bet his class is very proud of him. Well, they should be. Now we have an empty hot seat, so here's the next fastest finger question. Take a look. With these famous sea crafts in order of their maiden voyage, starting with the earliest. Mayflower, Santa Maria, Lusitania, Contiki. All right, the time's up. Let's see that answer now in the correct order, starting with the earliest sea craft, and of course the Santa Maria, then the Mayflower, then Lusitania, finally Contiki, who got it right in the fastest time. Let's see, the winner is John Wilkes. Call now. So it's John Wilkes in the hot seat. John is from Independence, Missouri, the home of uh, Harry Truman. That's right. Whose home is now a museum, as I understand it. Uh huh. Yeah. So what do you do there in Independence? I'm a meter reader for the city utility. You read the meters? Read water and electric meters. Aha, uh -huh. you go to part of the house where the meter is? Yeah. Make Water's note? usually in the front, the electric's usually in the back. How long have you been doing that? More than 20 years. 20 years? Mm -hmm. And what's the best part of meter reading? Uh, I like working outside. Mm -hmm. I don't have a boss looking over my shoulder. No supervision at all? No. Nope. You're out in the field by yourself. How many meters do you read a day? Mm, I, I read... 8,500 in a month. No kidding. So, yeah, each day is a, not the same amount. Yeah. And what's the worst thing about your job? The dogs. <laughs> they come after you? Yeah. Yeah, they don't want you snooping around reading their meters. No, they don't. So, do you get bit? I've been bit so many times, I've lost count. You're kidding me. Nope. It's 20, but I'm not sure how many more than 20 is. Actually, come on up and bite you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't let them exactly come no. on up and bite me. But they bite me. And you're accompanied by uh, your wife, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You have a job, too? Yes. What I, do you do? I clean houses for a living. All right, good. So look, you know you know what the prize is here. We got $2,050,000. You know about the rules, and you know about the lifeline, Sean. So good luck to you, and let's get started on the play with Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we go. For $100, a 
dangerous person who looks harmless is said to be a wolf in what, John? Stiletto pumps? Sheep's clothing? Gold lame cape? The touring company of cats? The answer is B, sheep's clothing. That's what it is, a wolf in sheep's clothing. 200, what is the term for a one-piece garment worn by paratroopers? Zoot suit? Jumpsuit? Seersucker suit? Bikini? Well, they jump out of planes, so the answer is B, jumpsuit. Final answer. Yes, sir, it's a jumpsuit, $200. John Wolf going for 300 A person described as a hayseed is most likely from where? City? Country? Suburbs? Allergy town? The answer is B, country. That's where they say a hayseed is from, from the country. Going for $500, which of these devices works by creating a partial vacuum against a surface? Glue gun? Chalkboard eraser? Cellophane tape? Suction cup. The answer is D, suction cup. Final answer. Yes, a suction cup. He's up to $1,000. Which of the following is the term for a Russian astronaut? A Bolshevik? A Dhaka? Cosmonaut? Cossack? Well, he might be a Bolshevik, but the answer is C, cosmonaut. That's what they call him, a cosmonaut. Very good. We're going for $2,000. Take a look. In December 2000, what 128-year-old department store chain announced it was going out of business? Montgomery Ward, Walmart, Kmart, J.C. Penney. The answer is A, Montgomery Ward. Final answer. Yes, it was Montgomery Ward and what a shame. Here it comes for 4000 On the TV series Baywatch, what color swimsuits do the lifeguards wear while on duty? White, black, red, green. You ever watch Baywatch? I've seen it in passing, and every time I've ever seen it, they're always in red swimsuits. So I'll say C, red, final answer. Good for you. You remember that one. You did a good job. $4,000. For a guy who only watched it in waiting, you know, watched it momentarily. Good I memory. Flip to the more yeah. esoteric. Thing. Red suits. Eight thousand dollars, John. Which of these women's Olympic gymnastics events is performed to music? Vault, floor exercise, uneven bars, balance beam. To music. The answer is B. Floor exercise. Final answer. Very good. You got it for eight thousand dollars. Sixteen thousand coming up, John. Which of these following countries used to be called Persia? Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iran. The answer is D. Iran. Final answer. Yes, for sixteen thousand. Hey, John. I am John Wilkes, who reads meters for a living in Independence, Missouri, in the hot seat right now. You know, you're the third uh, person from Independence, Missouri, in that hot seat. That's what I was told. Yeah. You remember watching the show and seeing any? No, I must have missed the other yeah, two. Yeah, no, the two other people here. Yeah, you're the third one, which is kind of remarkable mm -hmm. for a small town. So let's see, uh, Kathy, how do you think he's doing? Doing great. All right, so John, here you go. You won 16,000. Should you miss here, you lose 15 grand, but we're going for 32,000. Very important, the best news of all, you've got three lifelines. Let's play. 32,000 dollars. What controversial subject was John T. Scopes charged with teaching in his classroom sex education atheism theory of evolution communism
That was the monkey trial. And the answer is C, theory of evolution. Final answer. Just won $32,000. away from the two million fifty thousand right now here it comes the sixty four thousand in two thousand which of these authors released her 50th novel mary higgins clark danielle Steele, judith krantz jackie collins i don't have an idea in the world no idea 50th uh, novel jackie collins i don't think she's written nearly that many novels Daniel Steele probably is. Let's do the 50-50. Put a narrow it down, computer. Yeah. Take away two of those wrong ones, please. Mary Higgins Clark or Daniel Steele? lines left. Coming up, $125,000 worth of question. A roadrunner is a member of what family of birds? Cuckoo, ostrich, thrush, pigeon. Like a phone of friend. Yeah? My friend Bob Levine. Bob, huh? what does he do? He works the telephone company, Southwestern Bell. He knows his birds. He knows his birds. Well, let's get Bob on the line, AT and T. Hello. Hello, Bob. Yes. You reached us, Philbin, calling from New York City. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Great. We've got John here, and he's going for one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Kind of hung up on the question, so he's going to give you the question and four possible answers. Okay? Okay. All right, John. All yours. Thirty seconds right now. A roadrunner is a member of what family of birds? Cuckoo, ostrich, thrush, pigeon. A roadrunner. Go over them again. Cuckoo, ostrich, thrush, pigeon. 15 seconds. Eight seconds. Uh, Give me a guess. I'm going to guess cuckoo. Oh, sure are you. Not sure at all. Okay, thanks. Still could go to the audience. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, audience, we need some help. For John, a roadrunner is a member of what family of birds? Cuckoo, ostrich, thrush, or pigeon? If you're ready, on your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Sixty-five percent say ostrich. That's quite a majority. Seen this cartoon for years, huh? The mm -hmm. Roadrunner? Mm-hmm. No, I really don't think it's the ostrich, personally. I think it's either the cuckoo or the thrush, and I'm not sure enough to make a guess to risk that money. You can walk with 64. I'm going to walk. You got to walk, huh? I'm going to walk. Well, if you had to guess, what would you guess? I'd have guessed thrush. Thrush. Answer is cuckoo, believe it or not. It's all right. 64,000. Good money. See ya, John. Nice meeting and good luck. Okay, buddy. Well, what's a contestant to do? Bob the Birdman, his phone a friend, got it right. The roadrunner is a cuckoo, not an ostrich is what the audience picked. But I'd like to uh, meet a reader, John Wilkes, who takes home $64,000. Congratulations. All right, we've got to keep going now. Here's the next fastest finger question. 
Put these holiday movies in order of their first theatrical release, starting with the earliest. A Christmas Story, Groundhog Day, Halloween, Roman Holiday. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see that answer in the correct order. Starting with the earliest film, and it was Roman Holiday, and then Halloween, Christmas Story, finally Groundhog Day. That's the right order. Who got it in the fastest time? Let's see. Winner is Greg Gibbs. Greg Gibbs from Duke Law School in Durham, North Carolina, in our hot seat right now, and I guess mm -hmm. you're wrapping up your uh, education in law, right? I, uh, law school is three years long, and I'm in my final semester. Do you have a job? Yes. Actually, I do have a job lined up. Uh, I'll be coming here. I'll be coming to New York in September, uh, and I'll be working for one of the intellectual property firms here in town. Well, good for you. That's mm -hmm. great. Thank you. And your wife, uh, Shannon, is back there, too. Hi, Shannon. How are you doing? Good. And what do you do? I'm a retail manager. Uh-huh. All right, fine. You ready to go to work here? Oh, yeah. All right, yeah, here we go, go, my man. You know the rules. You know about the lifelines. You know how much money you're playing for. So let's do it, Greg. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. For $100, the person who is said to be blowing a gasket is doing what? Sneezing, falling asleep, getting angry, playing with dynamite. I like D, it's funny, but that's not the right answer. And I blow a gasket all the time. The answer is C, getting angry. And that's what you do when you blow a gasket, you get angry. $200 right now. Which of the following foods is usually part of a horse's diet? Pineapple, hay, grits, chili and sea bass. The answer is hay, B, hay. Yes, it is. It's hay. 300. A piece of clothing that has passed from an older sibling to a younger one is called what? Closet turnover. Wardrobe pass. Hand me down. Humiliating. <laughs> it is humiliating. Um, I was the oldest child. There was four of us, but all of my younger siblings were all sisters. So the hand-me-down thing didn't work very well for our family, but the answer is C, hand-me-down. Yes, it's the right answer. You hand it on down. Okay, Greg, $500. Which of the following positions is not part of a basketball team? Center, forward, guard, defensive tackle. I don't want to rub it in, but Duke's basketball team is a little bit better than your Notre Dame team. I am aware of the fact that they don't have a defensive tackle. D, defensive tackle. Final answer? Final answer. Are you all through? <laughs> Can we go on with the game? Right, okay, sure, sure. He's yeah. right, defensive tackle for $500. Up to $1,000. What color is most closely associated with the recording artist Prince? Purple, blue, green, yellow. Purple rain. Uh, a purple, final answer. Yes, Prince and Purple, one of the same for a thousand. Good going, Prince. You got through those first five just fine. Here it is for 2,000 now. Which of the following is not considered the precious metal? Gold, silver, iron, platinum. The answer is C, iron. Final. Final answer. Yes, it's I am for two thousand dollars. Four thousand. The leaf of a shamrock is most commonly divided into how many parts? Two, three, four, six. Well, if you find one with four, uh, you're lucky, and that's considered rather rare because it usually doesn't have them, and it usually has three. The answer is B, three. Want to make that your 
Final answer? Well, I convinced myself with my reasoning, but now I'm not sure all of a sudden. Um, what are you not sure about? Um, well, I'm trying to picture a shamrock is really what it comes down to. You know, shamrock is associated with Notre Dame. <laughs> are you going to continue with this? Wouldn't it be funny if you did miss this one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, all right. I don't wish it that luck. You know that. What do you think? Well, I really do think it's E3. Final answer. Final answer. Yes, it's three. Great. You got it. Well, that's how it means we're out of time for tonight, but Greg will be back here tomorrow night, and joining him will be ten people who are arriving in the Big Apple right now. And they are Linda Palumbi, Heather Davila, Scott Stone, Debbie Lantry, Paul Pearson, Joyce Ziggerell, Jim Tosopoulos, Brent Beats, Scott Coyne, and Paul Herman. Hey,